In the 2040s, the Tantalus base is built on Mars. A crew of eight astronauts go on a mission to gather samples that last six months and today is their last day. In 19 hours, the spacecraft Aurora will come from Earth to pick them up. In the Martian desert, Vincent and Rebecca drive a rover toward an excavation site, noticing there's a sandstorm incoming. Once they get there, Vincent calls Kim on the radio to tell her it's time to return to the base, reminding her they need to get ready for departure. However Kim ignores him and keeps on digging, desperate to find good samples. While they wait, Vincent tells Rebecca that he's tired of Kim's attitude and he doesn't look forward to the six-month trip back to Earth, even if he's eager to be home. When Kim finally boards the rover, she complains about the fact they're going back with nothing to show because six months weren't enough to accomplish anything. As they drive back, they get a call from Captain Charles, who urges them to hurry up because they need help fixing their communications link to the Aurora. At the base, Richard manages to restore the signal but also has to fix the power, which has been in trouble because of the storm. Meanwhile Marco asks Charles for a last trip to the excavation site because he needs to fix a broken gamma sensor. Charles is hesitant but eventually agrees, telling him to take Richard too and to return before dark. When the trio arrives and sees Marco and Richard leaving, Kim complains because it isn't fair that she was forced to come back while the guys get to leave again. On the way to the site, Richard is shocked to learn Marco lied, they aren't going to fix anything, they're going to pick a sample of something called microscopic anomaly. Back at the base, Vincent repairs the cooling system while chatting with psychologist Robert. He's noticed the approach trajectory of the Aurora and thinks it looks like drunk driving. Meanwhile Kim checks Marco's workstation to find his real intentions behind the trip and discovers an image of cavities on a rock. Rebecca points out that the cavities seem to be microbial borings, and when they look at the sample under the microscope, they find signs of bacterial cell division. This means Marco lied because he refuses to share the credit. Angry, Charles calls Richard and Marco to announce the excavation site is now off-limits. However Marco tells Richard to pretend that he didn't hear Charles because of the bad signal. Then Marco takes a soil sample from the dig site and as he takes a closer look, the ground under him begins shaking and suddenly collapses, causing Marco to get stuck underground. Richard rushes out of the rover to help, but he can't see well because of the steam. Moments after Richard asks for backup, Charles and Lauren arrive to rescue Marco. Richard thinks Marco is already dead but Lauren disagrees and tries to go down the pit. Charles immediately stops her, saying the pit is too dangerous in its current state. They decide that Lauren will stay behind to keep watch while Charles and Richard return to the base to pick up proper rescue gear. At the base, Kim tells Charles that she wants to announce their discovery. Richard points out that Marco died, but Kim thinks it's Marco's own fault for not respecting protocol and makes Richard mad. The group contacts Mission Control, who has seen the report and gives them permission to retrieve Marco regardless of the risk. Before leaving, Robert wants Charles to scold Kim for her behavior because Marco's death isn't his fault, but Charles says that every crew mistake is his responsibility. While Charles takes Rebecca, Robert, and Vincent back to the site, Lauren waits in the rover. Suddenly she hears someone trying to get inside the vehicle and tries to inform Charles over the radio, but he can't hear her because of the storm interference. When the team finally arrives at the excavation site, Lauren has disappeared. They assume she fell in the pit, so Vincent straps his suit to a rope and goes down. As he's about to reach the bottom, he notices a microbial organism growing on the rock formation. The further he goes down, the worse Vincent feels and he starts hyperventilating as he has flashbacks of the time he was accidentally trapped in the Aurora. Noticing this, the others immediately pull the rope to bring him back. Vincent takes a moment to calm down and tells them he didn't see anyone down there. Then Robert looks around the area and is surprised to find two sets of footprints in the direction of the base. This doesn't make sense because they could have just taken the rover. The team calls Kim to tell her to get ready for possible casualties, and in return Kim points out that if Marco's suit is damaged, he could be suffering from brain damage due to oxygen deprivation. At that moment Richard checks the tracking system and sees two figures 50 meters away from the base. As Kim tries to establish contact with them on the radio, Richard goes to the airlock to let them in. At the same time that Kim sees a strange figure slowly making their way to the base, Richard opens the airlock and Marco falls to the ground, revealing a hole in his helmet. Richard helps him take it off, but steps back in shock when he sees Marco now looks like a zombie. Suddenly Marco stands up and grabs an electric drill to attack Richard, stabbing him in the gut. Richard falls but manages to move enough to trigger the alarm. Kim rushes to the airlock, but as soon as she sees Marco she runs away to hide in another room. Soon Lauren reaches the airlock too, revealing she's also infected. Richard struggles with his pain and manages to run into another room, locking the door behind him. Lauren goes after Kim instead, who starts fighting the creature the best she can considering she's no soldier. Soon Marco joins her and Kim uses every object in the room to defend herself. One of the creatures gets distracted by drinking some liquid on the floor, so Kim knocks the other down and runs, locking this door as well. Before passing out, Richard manages to say Mayday on the radio. When the others come back, Charles tells them to wait outside while he investigates, finding a complete mess inside. He finds Kim as Marco starts breaking down the glass door, 
So Charles orders her to get in a suit while he tries to hold the creatures off. Soon Marco gets out and Charles tries to reason with him, but it doesn't seem that the infected brain understands words. Once she's suited up, Kim leaves the base and Charles runs to the airlock. On his way out, the infected astronauts catch up to him and stab him on the shoulder. After some struggle, Charles goes out and reunite with the others. They disable the door to trap their sick friends and Vincent complains, but Kim shows him the creature's faces while pointing out they aren't humans anymore. The group runs to hide in the greenhouse dome and Rebecca tries her best to treat Charles' wound even though she isn't a doctor. Charles realizes that he's dying and gets sad because he can't remember what his family looks like, so he asks the crew to tell his family that they were in his thoughts. Suddenly Charles grabs Robert by the neck, so the others have to pull him back and try to calm him down. A desperate Vincent holds him down until Charles has trouble breathing. Then Charles tells the crew they'll never see home and passes out. Vincent thinks he's dead, but Kim immediately ties Charles to the table in case his body reanimates like Marco and Lauren. Upset by the sight, Vincent covers the body with a blanket. While discussing what to do, Vincent looks under the blanket and sees the infection spreading. Moments later, they hear an explosion outside so they look at the monitor to discover that the infected astronauts have escaped by using an explosive on the airlock. Soon they make it to the dome and start pounding on the door at the same time Charles' body shakes for a few seconds. The crew wants to contact the space station but the comms are down, so Vincent volunteers to go through the oxygen pipe to get back to the base and fix the system. After Vincent leaves, Rebecca takes a sample of Charles's blood and notices that he's infected too. Minutes later, Vincent stops crawling because he is having a panic attack as he's haunted by the memories of his accident at the space station. On the radio, Rebecca helps him calm down by saying everyone in the team is as scared as he is. When he finally reaches the base, he finds blood all over the place but still gets down to work. Back to Rebecca, she wonders if antibiotics could neutralize the bacteria and injects Charles with a solution. Charles' body immediately starts shaking and contorting, so Rebecca thinks he may be fighting the infection. However Kim points out that the movement is just the body's reflexes having a natural reaction. Once the body stops moving, Rebecca takes another blood sample and discovers that the bacteria is no longer multiplying, meaning the solution doesn't cure the bacteria but does slow it down. Kim pours the solution into a decontamination spray so they can vaporize it and use it against the creatures. Meanwhile Vincent manages to contact Aurora but before he can tell them about the situation, the power shuts down. Robert checks the monitor and notices their sick friends are going back to the base because they can't break the dome doors. The team agrees to unlock the door to lure the creatures to the airlock and spray them with antibiotics. As soon as one of the infected astronauts comes in, the decontamination spray activates and the creature falls to the floor squirming. Unfortunately Rebecca then discovers that the effect is only temporary because the bacteria is starting to develop resistance to the medicine. Vincent is making his way to fix the power only to come across an infected Richard, but he doesn't hesitate to repeatedly bash Richard's head with his flashlight. No matter how hard he hits the creature won't go down, so Vincent runs to the oxygen pipe and crawls back. He asks Rebecca to open the panel while warning her he didn't seal the other end of the pipe. The others put on their helmets before pulling Vincent out, then Kim grabs two bottles of antibiotics and throws them at Richard, who isn't held back. Vincent and Rebecca run to open the airlock, hoping to escape. At that moment Robert notices that Charles' body is starting to reanimate, so he runs to and locks the door behind him, leaving Kim with to die under the creature's attack. When he joins Vincent and Rebecca, he just tells them Kim didn't make it. In the airlock, the creature they sprayed before is starting to wake up, so Robert kicks it a few times in fury. Then the trio finally opens the airlock and runs away, but on their way out their infected friend stabs Rebecca in the leg with scissors. Fortunately the crew is fast enough to reach the rover and Vincent injects Rebecca with an antibiotic, hoping it'll help her body fight the bacteria. The group leaves in the rover, but after a few moments they realize they don't have enough power to reach the landing site. They'll have to walk there, which Rebecca can't do because of her wound. Vincent thinks they should take Rebecca to the base to treat her injury, but Robert thinks they should leave her behind because she's infected. Rebecca points out Robert may be infected too because Charles grabbed his neck, but Robert changes the subject. He remembers there's another rover at the excavation site, so they head there instead. Once they reach the right spot, Robert makes his way to the other rover on foot and then contacts Vincent on the radio, telling him to leave Rebecca. Vincent refuses, so Robert gets away alone. Vincent comes out to stop him but it's too late. To make matters worse, he sees that the infected ones have been following them and are getting closer, thus Vincent and Rebecca drive the rover through the sandstorm in hopes of losing them. Vincent thinks they'll have enough power to get to the landing site in the morning once the sun charges the rover's batteries. Meanwhile the Aurora departs from the space station and heads to Mars. In the morning, Vincent wakes up and finds a message from the space station, informing them a rescue team is on its way. Vincent tries to respond to the message, but the space station can't hear him. Then he realizes that Rebecca left the rover, so he begins following her footsteps. Eventually he finds her, but Rebecca tells him to stay back because she can feel the infection already taking effect. Desperate to save her, Vincent runs to her anyway, so Rebecca removes her helmet and dies of suffocation. 
In just a few minutes, her body reanimates and attacks Vincent, who fights her to restrain her. Rebecca begs him to end things for her, so Vincent chooses mercy and bashes her head with a rock. Moments later, Vincent sees the Aurora approaching, so he runs to the landing site. Unfortunately there also are three creatures heading there so Vincent tries to warn the Aurora not to open the hatch, but they can't hear him because of the storm interference. As soon as the rescue team comes out, the creatures attack them and kill them, and their screams of terror can be heard by Vincent on the radio. He still keeps going and finds the creatures feeding on the rescue team, but at least they don't notice him. There's also a body rotting in the most awful of states. Then Vincent enters the ship and after locking the door, he finds Robert in the cockpit. He's still self-aware, yet Vincent can already see signs of infection and says they can't risk taking the bacteria to Earth. Robert quickly attacks him and a fight ensues during which Robert stabs Vincent's helmet. Robert quickly attacks him and a fight ensues during which Robert stabs Vincent's helmet. As the ship starts flying on its own and shakes terribly, the men continue fighting and Vincent repeatedly headbutts Robert until he stops moving. Next he takes off his helmet stained with Robert's blood and opens the hatch, sending Robert's body out into space. During the few seconds in which he struggles to breathe, Vincent imagines Rebecca comforting him. Afterward Vincent sends a message to the station to tell them everything that happened. He knows there's a chance he's infected, so he explains his plan to crash the ship on Mars as soon as he notices any symptoms. The Aurora continues to fly while he waits for a response.